I feel the access to, to technology and equipment was a major issue. I think it's across the board in all schools, that's always a challenge. Um, but I do feel that in my own school, due to the nature of, due to, I suppose, the status of our school as a disadvantaged school, we don't have the same opportunities for fundraising. It's not an option. Our parents don't have the luxury of being able to volunteer more financial contributions to the school. So it meant then we had children maybe sharing equipment um, or maybe they were waiting. And I suppose waiting is where behaviour issues do come in. So that was an issue we had. Um, solutions we found were that um, we would have created maybe small groups. They worked at stations and then rotated around stations. So maybe one group might be doing um, a debugging job or maybe paper-based STEM activity. And the others then would have the actual equipment that meant then they weren't actually just waiting for equipment. They were occupied with a related activity. So that was one solution we came up with. But the availability of equipment and technology is an issue. Also, I suppose intermittent internet connection can be an issue too if you're depending on it for coding, because we do an awful lot of in my school. So you're depending on your internet to work for these activities or for iPads or tablets to be charged. Those are other challenges we faced, but nothing too difficult. Uh, unfortunately, our school's uh, infrastructure regarding STEM part are not that good. Uh, for I can say, for example, for my school, in you know that we had earthquake two years ago, so a lot of infrastructure was damaged. But slowly the steps are moving forward and the in infrastructure is getting better, but we have to all be patient because these are uh, small steps. But again, without us teachers uh, searching and asking for some better infrastructure, uh, it wouldn't be able uh, to get it at all. So the two criteria that make up the infrastructure are high quality instructional materials and access to technology. Since I work with the STEM team in my country in Malta and Bozo, I know I'm well aware that as regards to high quality instructional material, we provide a lot of resources ranging from recorded lessons, STEM trails, rubrics that help helps and guides teachers to continuously assess their students, webinars, webinars related to content knowledge and even pedagogical knowledge and even face-to-face -face seminars. So as regards that criteria, I think that we are addressing it quite well in our country. Uh, the other criteria, access to technology, I think that is a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging. And here I am mainly referring to uh, the idea of schools having their own STEM hub, their own innovation hub, such as, for example, the Future Classroom Lab. That is something which is not yet common in our country. Yet, uh, I know, for example, about a, a particular college which I, ha which I have in mind that I know that is working hard so that each school within its college will have this Future Classroom Lab. Um, so my suggestion is that in the long run we try to plan ahead our funds so that each school can have these spaces which will surely creating this right environment this type of environment will surely help our students acquire even more uh, transversal skills for example